So when we look at this entire cosmic court case, we see that God could have done nothing other than what he has done. It seems that he's not acting. It seems that he's out of control. It seems that God doesn't care when bad things happen. But it's because he values free will so much, he's had to let this thing go because we have rebelled as a planet. And the majority of people on this planet still want to live in rebellion to God and his law. They haven't accepted the Messiah and don't want to have a converted heart and they do not want to submit. We battle with that, even you and I, we battle with our carnal natures. But when we submit to God, he comes in and he gives us that overcoming power. As he lives his life in us, then we can overcome. And this is the beautiful gospel that we're given as Christians. So because God is not a dictator, this is the only thing that he could do. Now, maybe you've never seen this before. Maybe you have. But look at what Jesus said here he, when he cast out a demon, right? And they say here, now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to dis desolation or destruction. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how, now, here we go. This is major, friends. Listen to this. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? Wow, what is he saying? Well, in the context, he's just been casting out demons. And what does that do? It means he's reclaiming goods which is human life and souls. So he's taking a life from the house of the devil and taking it as his own. And he says there, how can you do that unless you first tie up the strong man, being the devil, and then you can plunder his goods and then you can take souls. And that's how he wins you and wins me. Jesus can plunder the goods of the devil from this earth, from this planet, his kingdom, and he's taking it back to himself. He'll take this entire planet back to himself. And he has a very, very interesting big point coming up as well in the next two minutes. Watch this now. Paul says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, friend, check this out. This earth is all that we know. We are restricted to this planet and we think this is the be all and the end all. But really we are insignificant. We are so tiny physically speaking. Symbolically this earth has been the cosmic courtroom of the entire universe is watching. Although it's a little speck in the universe it is major player in this cosmic court case. And so we have the entire universe looking at this planet and the struggle between good and evil as it produces evidence on both sides of the case here. All my Christian life, I thought it was about me. Jesus came to die to save me and that's it, full stop, period, end of story. It's not. It's not about you and me. You and I are part of the story, absolutely. And God loves you, absolutely, more than his life. He gave his life for us. That's biblical and that's the truth. But it's not only about you. There is the angels and the unfallen universe included in this entire affair. Now, here's a verse to prove it. Look at this here. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. This is Jesus, right? The fullness of the glory and the character of God in Jesus. As we read already in Corinthians, he was the image of God. Now look here. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, listen, to reconcile all things to himself by him, I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. What? I thought we were reconciled to God by the blood of Jesus, and that's all. But it says here that things in heaven were reconciled to him. Well, think about this, because maybe some of the angels that didn't side with Lucifer, maybe there were some doubts in their mind. 
they needed to really just see, well, who is really talking the truth? I mean, we don't want to rebel against God, but you know, those, those doubts are, are seeds in people's minds. And so those doubts were completely wiped out by the life of Jesus. And that's why it says here, by the blood of his cross, he reconciled all things to himself, whether they be on earth or in heaven. So there was this getting rid of all animosity or any doubt or any any kind of reservations that the angels, the unfallen angels might have had at the cross were completely wiped off the slate because the evidence was very clear who is telling the truth and who is the character to be worshipped and under whose government is the better kingdom and life. And again, friends, if it's not enough, have a look at this in Ephesians. He says, Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. There's this reconciling of things, whether they're on earth or whether they're in heaven, back to God. There's this unifying thing taking place here, this reconciliation which we just read because of the life of Jesus. So friends, it's not just about earthlings. This is a cosmic court case with cosmic ramifications in the angelic realm as well as on the earth in the life of human beings. And Paul says this. Now this is a picture of amphitheater in Pompeii where many people unfortunately would have fought to the death. For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession, like men condemned to die in the arena. We have been made a spectacle, and the word there is theater in the Greek, in other words, that they look into. We have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as to men. Again, we get this this concept that, the angels are looking in this good and evil, this controversy between the character of God and the character of Satan and who's telling the truth. He's saying, just as the spectators would watch this battling going on between the gladiators, he's saying, it seems that we are on display, going to be put to death by the forces of evil in this cosmic court case from which the angels are looking into. He says the whole universe to angels as well as to men. Wow! Have you ever seen this from this point of view? Don't you want to tell the world about this? This is exciting. This is mind blowing. This is this means gives the whole Bible a whole new meaning. It's not all about us. And we've read this already. Now is the judgment of this world. The ruler of this world will be cast out at the cross. And Jesus carries on. And if I be lifted up from the earth, talking about the cross, I will draw all men to me. Now. Friends, that men is not in the Greek. That has been supplied. And sometimes in translations, and I've done two semesters of Greek, sometimes in translations you have to supply the, the, the noun of what it's talking about. And so they did supply the word men here, assuming that's what it's referring to. But it is supplied. So remember this. Maybe it's incorrect to have the word men there. And it should be left as all. And let's read it again. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all unto me. That means angels and men. And this is why you see when after the, the res resurrection that Jesus Christ is coronated and the entire universe worship him. Why? Because he's now come up from the earth after this display of this court case. And they're like, wow, wow, you are fantastic. We can just worship you because we know you will not abuse that worship. You will not take advantage of us. If we completely submit ourselves to your kingdom, you will not abuse that because you are so humble. Glory, 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 honor to him, all power to him. And then lift him up voluntarily. Voluntarily. This is the jury of this court case that you and I by the goodness of God, by the act of his sacrifice that he loves us, I lift him up as my king because of what he's done for me, because of who he is. And the angels too, when they saw the display, this court case on earth, they just praise him.
What, didn't they praise him before? Now, with extra wisdom, with extra insight to who he really is, they're like, wow. Friends, the king is coming soon and we need to decide which side we're on. If you haven't made that decision, I want to encourage you right now. Decide which side of this court case you're going to be on. And if I can help you in any way, hit me in the comment section. If you need prayer, please do that. Uh, let me know what I can pray for because this channel is here to support you. I want to help you, encourage you and build you up and edify you in the word of God as much as I possibly can. Read this. And God says to Ezekiel, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why should you die? It's not necessary to die the second death. Everyone will die the first death maybe, but not the second death. The second death is, is final. There's no coming back from the second death. And this is what God is saying is, turn why should you die when he's given us the gift of eternal life through his son Jesus? When we accept Jesus, he says here, For he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we get, remember that um, binding up of the strong man, that Jesus comes and plunders his goods. And this is it here. We've been translated, we've been taken from the, the wicked kingdom into the kingdom of God by his dear son and the kingdom of his dear son. So friends, I hope this really helps you and maybe watch it again or watch the entire series because step by step, we can see that there's something going on here about the accusations that Satan was making. And as a result of that, we have these questions that you and I, it's like walking into a movie in the last five minutes and you're trying to figure out the plot and like who's guilty and why are they doing this and this is this is the experience of the humans, and 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 so therefore we have these questions. Well, if God's so powerful, then why does this happen? We need to look at the entire story, which God gives us in His Word. So I encourage you to read it. But number two is that I really hope that this helps you. I really hope that we can put this to rest. That God is all about freedom. He's giving the angels freedom, he's giving the demons freedom, he's giving Satan freedom, and he's giving you and I freedom to get back into his kingdom. Make that choice, make that decision today. Wow! So thank you so much for, for being here, and uh, thank you for watching to the very end. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.